Hey guys, it's Will Patson here again with a new Illustrator CC tutorial for you, absolutely free, coming from me, and I just wrapped then. Anyway, so today I'm going to talk to you and tell you and show you about how to create this logo. Now, I did this as a rebrand for my YouTube channel, sort of, and I thought I'd show you how I did it. Seeing as how I teach you how to do design things, I might as well teach you this. So it's done in Adobe, it's done in Adobe. CC at Adobe Illustrator CC even and it's fairly simple but this is for the uh, intermediate students who are on my channel who want to know a bit more uh, than just the beginner stuff so I'm going to show you how I did this okay so as you can see I've got two artboards here and then basically I have like the shapes and stuff so not the shapes the text here and then within the text I've created angles for them to sit on which will make them angled then on it over here, they are just shapes that are really weird because they're all cut out. I'm just zoom in to show you. And if you can hear that outside, it's an aeroplane, but I don't think you can. Okay, so I'm going to go and show you how I did this. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up a new uh, document up here. Just 500 by 500 for me does well. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, write out uh, my name, like William. And then I'm going to change the font and the size. Go to Command T, and I've got this font uh, called Dolly, and it's for personal use. So if you want to do it for any client work or anything, then you'll have to um, buy a license for it, which which is all good. Okay, so I've got William, and you can buy, get that font from defont.com, or you can buy the license from the website that it shows. Okay, so we've got William there. I'm going to go ahead and copy this because I like that font. And I'm going to create uh, an angle for it. And the way I do this is by pressing P to get my pen tool at a point. Use my smart guides. If you haven't got your smart guides, go up to view and then go to smart guides and turn them on or just press command U. Okay, so my green smart guide tells me like around about here. And I'm just going to make a small angle in the center of this. And we can edit this later. Okay, I'm going to press shift and X. And then within this, I'm going to just align it. If I can just select this, I'm going to align it uh, vertically. Okay, I'm going to bring this down a bit and then delete this layer because I've already copied it. I'm going to press T and if I was to write on the path, it'll give me this sort of icon. So I'll click on the path, press Command V or Control V in PC. And then I'm going to press Command Enter. Now the problem is, is that it's overspilling and this red mark shows us that. So what we need to do is we need to move it a little bit. So the first thing I need to do is highlight it again, sorry, and then make sure it's center aligned, which will move it a little bit more. And then if we go over to here, we have this sort of, this sort of box. If we move to the right, we get this sort of arrow going on on the right side of our cursor. That's what we want. When you get that, click and then drag to your left so it goes all the way. And then you want to do the same to the right. It can be a bit of a pig to find, but there we go. Awesome. I'm just going to expand this up a little bit and then I'm going to bring the whole shape down by clicking and then uh, just, just sort of trying to put it down a tiny bit if I can. There we go. Awesome. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write Patterson, but I'm going to change it, uh, the font to a font called Intro and then I'm going to also change the size of this and make sure the kerning is right, which it is. Awesome. I'm going to select that. Sorry, and then press Command C. And then I'm going to write, do a new path to make it sort of angled again. So I'm going to press that. I'm just going to move this for a sec because it's doing me head in. And then I'm going to write a new thing here. There we go. I'm going to make it a bit more angled than the last one. Awesome. And now I'm going to press Command X to switch the fill to the stroke. Awesome. I'll get off that and I'm just going to center align it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press uh, T and then click on it. Command V. And then I'm going to press um, Command Enter, which will get me into this bit again. So again, we need to move that to the left. And then we've got a bit of overspill here. So... We'll need to click on it again with the uh, text tool. And then I'm going to just bring the points down a little bit. So I'm going to bring, bring it down like so. Awesome. 
now we've got a proper line here if I wanted to make this, which I do, I want to make it a bit more uh, curved, then what I can do is I can press A, and then if I just hover over it, we get to the line. Go to the end of the line and click, and you'll get these handles, and then I'm just going to pull the handle up a tiny bit, which will uh, interfere or manipulate the shape of the angle. I don't actually like that, so I'm just going to keep it the way it was. Awesome, so we've got two things all done there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my line tool here and then I'm going to click on it, create another line at the bottom, like so. I'm going to bring up the stroke box up here, make sure it's about, you know, two or three points, depending on how big your document it is, and then round cap it and all as well. Okay, I'm going to change that to two points. I don't like the three points. Then I'm going to just uh, align it horizontally like so. Then the next thing I want to do is create a, uh, a sort of a triangle. So the easiest way to do this is go to your hexagon shape under your rectangle tool. And then the way I do it, your, your hexagon shape will be like this. So if you use your down arrow key all the way down, it'll take you to a triangle. Awesome. So then we're going to press command and X, which will change the fill to the stroke. If you press E as well, and then... Uh, come out a little bit with your cursor, hold shift and then rotate it 90 degrees. We'll have a sort of a play button triangle, like so. And I'm just going to zoom in now with Z and then marking it. And then uh, I'm going to just align these both together. But the problem is, I keep hitting this, uh, the text up here. So, what you want to do is with these, you want to highlight this, this text and press Command 2 which will lock both the layers within the actual layer here. So we can't actually touch them anymore. So I'm gonna uh, zoom in again on this, and I'm gonna highlight both of these, and then select uh, the um, line again. So that'll be the one that we're selecting and uh, lining it to. I'm just gonna press horizontal and vertical aligned, and then all as well. Press Command G to group them both together, which is good. And then I'm going to bring it up a little bit as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this smaller as well. Like so. Awesome. So we've got that. And then I'm going to move it up a tiny bit. Next thing we want to do is uh, write graphic design or whatever you want at the bottom. But I'm going to change the font to something called Century Gothic. And then I'm going to go bold. And then with the type, I'm going to go up to type, change case uppercase I'm going to bring it right the way down now with font when you're doing a small font like this you want to change the kerning of it and the kerning is the space between each letters so if I press T and then command A and then go on to it I just need to hold alt down and then press on the right key which will uh, kern the text for me like so it still wants to be readable but that's what you want awesome and then if you really wanted to you could create another space to make it you know more distinguishable as in letters and stuff awesome I'm gonna just align this as well by going up to align and then because it's aligning to the artboard now I can line it straight away awesome that looks good to me I'm gonna just make this smaller press S to get the scale tool and then it'll scale it a bit better for me like so as you can see, if you're finding this a bit difficult, I'll go and suggest looking at my other videos because this is sort of an intermediate video uh, for people who already know the basics of Illustrator. So I'm going to select all of these. No, I'm not actually. I'm going to select William up here once I've uh, unlocked them. So a way to unlock them is uh, you don't have to select anything. You just press Command, Alt and 2, which will unlock the layers and select them straight away. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure these are both aligned to the uh, horizontal axis and the vert sorry the uh, yeah the horizontal axis same with this horizontal same with this horizontal just like so awesome now I need to change the spacing between these like that and I think that looks okay at the moment Okay, I'm going to just make sure these are all in the middle. And then I'm going to group them together. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to come out of that. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and press Command 
eight. If I can, the heck. What does it say? Can't make compound path. All objects in a compound path must be passed, and they can't be brushed, brushed or be part of an object. Okay, I'm going to ungroup that. Should no, it doesn't work. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, actually, ah, oh, I know why. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make a new artboard. I forgot about that. We're going to go to the artboard slide here, create a new artboard. And we're going to go ahead and copy all of this by press, like pressing Command A and then pressing Command C or Control C. Going over to your second artboard, press Command V, and I'm going to press Command Eight. No, I'm not. Sorry, I'm going to go ahead and press Command Shift and O which will outline all the uh, text so it's not editable anymore. But we still need to expand this sort of section down here. So I'm going to go to object and expand, fill and stroke, yeah, OK. Press Command 8, which will uh, bring it all into a compound path, not a group. A compound path is, path is generally uh, tricking Illustrator into thinking it's one path. So you can do multiple commands on it and effects on it without it thinking that it has to do it on multiple different shapes. It's tricking Illustrator, basically. I'm going to hold uh, press and uh, highlight that, and I'm going to just align it to the outboard. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and zoom out, and then with the on the second outboard, we want to go ahead and scale this right the way up. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Because what happens here, and what we want to do here, is we want to go ahead and make it rough. So before I do that, I can just see here uh, that these aren't actually shapes together and nor is this. So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup by pressing Command Shift and G. And then I'm going to get, uh, well, I'm going to ungroup, sorry. Or I'm going to just release the compound path, I think, just for one minute. And then I'm going to go ahead here. OK, I'm not going to bother because that's taking too long. So I'm just going to scale it up a bit more. And if you guys are wondering why this video is a bit strange, it's because I've got a cold and I tried to do this before, but the audio wasn't flipping working, so it was quite annoying. Okay, so I've scaled it up, and the reason we're doing this is because the roughen effect that we're going to use to make the edges all rough uh, is best used when it's big or when the uh, fonts and the shapes are big. So we're going to go to Effect, Distort, and Transform, Roughen while selected. We'll get this sort of dialog box up here, so I'm going to press Preview. And it looks crazy. So we're going to press absolute, which will bring it back a bit. And then I'm going to uh, go down to about 2%. And I'm going to go to 20%, which is what I like. And we could have smooth if we wanted to, which looks OK, which will smooth it over. Now what we have is an effect on our text to make it look a bit rough so it doesn't look like it's just a font. So what I'm going to do is to make this text or this effect final, I'm going to click on the shape or the group. I'm going to go to object, ex not rasterize, sorry, object and expand. And then now we can scale it all the way back down to where it was. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to go get some uh, shapes and stuff to, or textures. And the textures that I got were from this website called thinkdesignblog.com and it is an absolute freebie. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and download it. It's absolutely free. Go to thinkdesignblog.com to get it. And I'm going to use this first one, uh, and I've got it over here. I just opened it up, and then I'm going to drag it over to this document here and scale it all the way down. Once I've scaled it down enough to what I like, I'm going to go ahead and use this and copy it by pressing Alt and just moving it to places where I want the texture to be seen. If you want to spice it up a bit, you can even uh, change the rotation of it by pressing R and rotating it. Then do one more here. Awesome. Now, because this text is a compound path, I can minus front all this and everything will be a okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all this and then press minus front. And you will have to wait at least like, you know, 10, 20 seconds if you've got a really good computer uh, because it's applying a lot of cuts to this. And there we go. We have done it and we have got our texture on there. Now what's happened there is it's not really textured it, to be honest, it's just cut little bits out. I can zoom right in and see what they've cut out. So these little pattern bits here, they've cut out, which looks texturized. 
Then all you need to do after this is press Command C and then go into Photoshop and press Command V, which will then bring you to a dialog box. And when you're in that dialog box, make sure you paste it as a shape, not a smart object, because you can paste it into Photoshop as a shape with paths, because that's what it is in Illustrator. You can do what the heck you want with it. Then you can get it to look something like this, and I'll show you. Uh, where is it? YouTube mute. You can get it to look something like this, which you can put into Photoshop and edit the image in the background, and it'll make it look good. So this could be a cool thumbnail for your videos, or this could just look good on your one channel. If you can't tell on mine, I sort of like it anyway, so I'm going to stick with it. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I know it's been a crazy video, uh, but I hope you guys understand that, you know, I'm not feeling too great at the moment. But um, I, I thought I'd do this video just for the guys who want to know more and they already know stuff. So, yeah, if you guys like me then and you like my videos and content that's free for you to use, then why don't you go ahead and support me on Patreon, which means that you can tip me one or five or three dollars per video and you can cap it at the end of the month. Uh, and then you'll get freebies from me like the design files that I'm doing so I'm going to upload this to Patreon after this and if you uh, give me uh, one dollar or more per video then you will get this for you to use and then that's like an exercise file for you so basically yeah if you want to go get the exercise files go on to Patreon and become a supporter you can you get more like tips and stuff like that from me on there and you can get me uh, to do tutorials only for patreon as well so you guys can get uh, more out of me so thank you so much for watching check out prophesy pal and i'll see you later goodbye